Good morning. Hi, Morgan, the dentist. And we have a next Sunday. And uh, again, I am trying to show you in Dental MacGyver tips and tricks how I am dealing with uh, most annoying uh, part of uh, dentistry, uh, which is uh, restorative dentistry. And today, uh, on example of uh, one of my cases, uh, I am going to show you how to deal with uh, deep uh, subgingival reconstructions. Uh, so um, here you can see it on the beginning before we started. Uh, big reconstruction, second class, uh, occlusal distal, subgingival with um, big overhang here. Um, different view, we can see uh, full leftovers. Uh, carries measly mm, and uh, this is the case uh, with which we have to deal today mm. first tip mm, when you start drilling out old restoration uh, second class restoration uh, it's always preferred to start from occlusal surface because uh, it's very probable that um, this restoration is uh, leaking. So if you remove the occlusal part, um, the distal part here will fall out um, by itself. Uh, so you won't risk um, destroying the mesial uh, wall of adjacent tooth um, here. Um, I know in this case it does not matter because this restoration also requires uh, changing um, but uh, still uh, it's better not to uh, cause any uh, iatrogenic damages uh, in adjacent tooth. Um, as uh, usually um, this um, restoration here has to um, go uh, deep subgingival. Uh, we have little inflammation here. Um, carries mesially, so we open also uh, before uh, placing rubber dam. We also open um, this um, cavity here. Uh, and after that, uh, when we have such a subgingival um, cavity here, we have to start with gingivectomy. Uh, I will show you in upcoming episodes uh, how I am doing it. Uh, for uh, now, I am telling you that we can do it with light or with temperature. I prefer doing it with light, but with temperature is also a uh, very nice. Um, okay, uh, after that, we place rubber down. Always in such cases, uh, I isolate adjacent teeth, so uh, one teeth distally, one teeth mesially, uh, clamp is always on teeth distally, but sometimes when necessary we have to uh, place a clamp um, on the teeth that we are working on, um, but not in this case. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we had some problems with isolation here because our rubber didn't want to um, go underneath um, cavity margin. Uh, so uh, what we had to do here is to um, push it with our wedge on the beginning. I forgot to uh, take a photo so I am showing a photo uh, from different case. Here you can see that rubber is pushed down um, uh, underneath uh, the bottom of uh, edges of uh, preparation with the wedge. And here you, this is the moment when you can um, use one of the tricks. Uh, so when you have uh, the wedge placed here, you can prepare it uh, with your diamond burr. Um, when you are finishing your preparation line, so let's say uh, burr with um, yellow diamond, uh, you can prepare your wedge and uh, give it a shape 
which will allow you to create good emergence profile uh, just like here. Uh, so the swatch won't deformate your matrix and allow you to get a contact point. Uh, so this is important. But all, what is important here that uh, when you uh, prepare the swatch from uh, the marginal side, um, you need to prepare it that it is a little higher than uh, the height of the margin. So it will um, push your matrix better to the margin of your preparation. So uh, when, after that, you will have to uh, remove this wedge. And what you can see is that after a couple of minutes of pressing, your rubber uh, holds better underneath the margin of preparation. Uh, so this is the first advantage uh, of uh, placing the wedge here um, in such deep uh, subgingival case. But after that, you place your um, matrix here. This is the classical old school um, matrix, um, which is uh, cut um, for the size of the um, cavity. But as you can see, um, when you place only matrix here, uh, it is leaking uh, with blood. So you have to uh, place the wedge that you preferred during the preparation. As you can see from the um, buccal side, it holds your matrix perfectly. But from uh, the palatal side, you can see that still uh, there is some space here that need to be um, pushed. So what you have to do uh, is to take another wedge, this time diamond wedge, and put it right here uh, to fill this area that you prepared uh, for it in a wooden wedge, just like here. And as you can see, it will push your mat matrix uh, from the other side and uh, you will get um, a very good uh, marginal adaptation of your mm, matrix. But as you can see in such a mm, deep destruction, uh, you will have uh, problems with uh, creating contact points. Uh, so the next thing that you can do is to push your matrix with a um, composite condenser uh, and uh, so push it to um, adjacent tooth wall and uh, in the um, three areas here place a blockout resin uh, and while holding your uh, composite condenser here a light cure blockout resin and it will keep the shape of your matrix and the contact point uh, perfectly adapted to the other teeth. Uh, and as you can see in the result, uh, we have very good marginal adaptation, very good emergence profile here, perfect contact point. So even in such a mm, deep uh, distraction, we were able to do it uh, fast, easy and effective. Uh, so after that, we start uh, with mesial war. Uh, and this is very impor important in such cases to do all the walls separately, not to do them together, because uh, you risk in this case uh, not getting uh, tight contact areas. Uh, so that's why we did um, measles war uh, as a second one. Uh, we used for that um, Bioclear matrix, which has a better shape. And in this case, we uh, could do it because um, destruction was not so deep. Uh, 
As you can see, uh, this matrix was perfectly adapted uh, without wedge and without ring, but uh, still we want to do a tight contact point here, so we had to use some uh, ring. Uh, but when we place our ring, we can see that it deforms our matrix. So that's why we have to use um, wedge after that. Uh, so we place it from a palatal side here. Um, but when you place your um, wedge after placing um, the ring, it is easier for you because your matrix does not move. So it holds in this place when you placed it before. Uh, so you won't risk that uh, while placing the wedge your matrix will move and you waste your time and have to start over. Uh, so we have our matrix perfectly adapted. Uh, so after that uh, restoring of mesial wall is uh, very simple. Uh, here you can see how entire teeth looks uh, restored. Uh, due to the destruction, of course, it will be crowned, but after finishing um, of um, entire restorative treatment. So that's why we wanted to restore our contact points perfectly without any overhang, because patient will have to function like it, uh, let's say, for a couple of months. Um, and we want, don't, didn't want to cause him any inflammation. Uh, this is why our aim was to create contact points perfectly here. Um, this is the gingiva after gingivectomy. And uh, and that's it for today. I hope it will be useful for you. Um, and that's it. Take care. See you uh, next time. Digital Dentistry.